Hey guys, what's going on? It's Xboxer1985 here. And today I have uh, the inside of my Generac generator, 7000 watt EXL. And I noticed something today while I was exercising it for about 10 minutes or so. And I figured, well, since I had the thing apart, I did find the, what the problem was, and I'll go into that in a few minutes. And since I had it open, I figured, well, might as well shoot a video. Uh, what I had discovered was this is the panel that came, that is I took off right at the moment. Everything I in inside there I've tested and everything is fine now. But what I was noticing is I had a 1500 watt heater that I used to exercise it. And now this outlet here, this duplex outlet, each of these has their own separate winding. This one will go to this circuit breaker, and this bottom one will go to the the uh, second circuit breaker here. These are each 20 amps a piece. I noticed that when I had the heater plugged into this one that you know unloaded is about 123 volts when fully loaded at about 13 1400 watts this was drop voltage was dropping to about 118 that's you know acceptable that's what I would normally expect uh, when I plugged it into here to uh, exercise the other half of the winding I noticed that unloaded was 122 121 and it would drop all the way down to 112 volts immediately I kind of thought okay well this is probably a resistance issue and a bad connection so I decided to take the panel apart now unfortunately the way that these things connect they are uh, spade connectors here's your 230 amps and here's your uh, 220s now what I noticed here is was on this particular one actually the if you follow this is the it's each of these uh, 30 amps are jumpered over to the 20 amps the uh, circuit breakers here so this little uh, this gray wire from here to let's see this gray wire from here to here will power this circuit breaker powers that circuit breaker and this one to that one right here um, and what I noticed here on the duplex outlet now pay attention to this and this is very important on the duplex outlet you see how there's two hot wires? Well, look there. I, uh, normally you would find a jumper that's in between those two screw lugs. You're going to have it here, and if you could see it, it's on the neutral, which that's how it should be. But if you're not getting voltage to the panel, but you're getting voltage at the stator, that's probably why. There should not be a jumper in between there. If you leave it jumpered, you will basically short these two uh, circuit breakers together and they will either pop or if they don't pop they're gonna burn your winding so just a quick tip on that now the spade connectors I wound up uh, just having to rebend them uh, these were very loose uh, this one here uh, to this one and then on the other side on the load side as well this is the line side just wound up uh, making them a little bit tighter and I'm 99 percent sure that will uh, solve the problem and now for my purposes for my uh, transfer switch uh, the internal wiring actually needs to be changed. Uh, this is normally a uh, bonded neutral, uh, which means that the ground is bonded to the frame and the neutral is bonded to ground. Now, it's done right here. There's this little jumper wire right here. Now, I have it taped off. This is normally jumper to the neutral, and this wire uh, is connected to the ground right here. This green wire runs all the way down to where your rectifiers are, and uh, it's held in by the uh, mounting bolt there. So in order to make this work with a two-pole transfer switch, you have to do the following. And it's a very easy, uh, it's a very easy procedure. So uh, here, you need to remove this jumper first. This is what uh, goes to the ground. It's, uh, I don't know if you can see it here, but it's going to this ground screw right here. You want to lift the ground there. Now, and that should remove the, uh, the isolate the neutral from the frame. But it there's one more thing that you have to do. You have your system control board right there and as you can see the green wire was normally connected to the frame right here on this screw. Unfortunately now that the neutral doesn't is not connected to ground uh, you, this green wire and this white wire is what powers your idle, idle, auto idle control. Now if you want it to work uh, you're gonna need to uh, take this green wire and unfortunately they don't make it very long so I wound up having to uh, you know crimp some ends on there put a put a bolt through and then just tape it off so it doesn't you know ground out to anything and all you have to do is run it to the neutral side of the 120 and that's all you really need to do so that way when you're running it you'll be able to uh, use your auto idle control you have your uh, this is wire number 11 this is for the voltage regulator this is on the line side of the uh, first 30 amp circuit breaker. This is the two wires, the two main hot wires uh, coming off 
and it will go into your idle sensing transformer here. This is what senses more than one amp and then it will disable the uh, idle solenoid and then it will engage when there's no load on it. And these two wires are looped through here um, through the transformer and these go back down to the stator. And the same thing goes for this green wire as well. This is your red neutral wire. The red neutral wire will go to your 125 30 amp um, uh, outlet right there which is then jumper to the neutral on your uh, L1430 and then which is again jumpered to the uh, 110 out duplex outlet. That's essentially the, the basic wiring. You have your, um, this is for your DC outlet right here. Uh, this is for when you're charging, uh, charging a battery 10 amps. This is a 10 amp auto reset so if you short it out this will uh, pop for a quick for a couple seconds and then it will re-engage. So this will prevent any type of shorts or reverse polarities issues into uh, when you're charging a battery. And this red wire down here goes to your front rectifier. Uh, there's another blue wire which comes out of here and this runs to your starter battery through another 10 amp fuse to where the starter contactor is. And this is what charges uh, the bottom butt rectifier if you're facing the generator the way I am is what's uh, charging that battery. Uh, you got to be careful you don't mix those two rectifiers uh, uh, together because this is only meant to charge, I think, at one and a half amps. You know, it's very low. If you put 10 amps to this, this battery will most likely explode. And finally, uh, the system control board. This is my, I can't tell, uh, it's a Revision S for, the, for this uh, particular generator. Here's the um, wires for the, um, that goes to the wiring harness on the engine. Uh, your white wire, this is for... Um, let's see here. Alright, that I know for a fact that the yellow wire is for the low oil sensor switch. Uh, your two black wires go to the uh, the idle solenoid itself. And then now the red wire is part, um, can't think off the top of my head, but I know the red and white wires are meant for the other part of the wiring harness um, that uh, operates the low oil pressure switch and the um, other other components here and part and part of the ignition as well to ground out the ignition. Um, that's pretty much it. Now as you can see how it's oriented, see there's a little hole right here on the side. This is your voltage adjustment pot and it's located right there. So normally there's a little uh, rubber grommet to cover this up so it's weatherproof but you know I didn't come with it when I got the generator so just a piece of electrical tape is usually what I leave that covered up with and this is where you adjust your voltage when you have the engine running and I uh, hope this uh, hope this helps out uh, with any questions and again uh, just to quickly uh, go over this is the snubber uh, cable that comes down and goes into the end bell and then this is the rubber grommet that takes care of this connector as well and if there's any questions please feel free to message me on the stack um, I'll leave the uh, comments being able to be posted here. I know a lot of guys will have these uh, machines and uh, they'll have a quick question on how the wiring goes. This is kind of a general overview. I'm kind of jumping around, but I hope this uh, kind of gives you an idea. If you need to do any kind of repair wiring, this is what it looks like. And uh, be aware of loose connections. That's where you're, if you're getting a lot of high resistance, a lot of voltage drop, uh, chances are that it's one of these connectors. And it's better to go and recrimp a brand new spade connector than to try and rebend them and and fix it that way. That's only a temporary solution. A lot of these were actually replaced. Uh, like all these ones in yellow, I replaced when I rebuilt the generator. Uh, these uh, blue ones, uh, except for. Uh, these two that I, that I just rebent, all these other ones have been changed. So, hope this has helped everyone. Again, thanks so much for the time. Please subscribe, and uh, you guys have a great day. Peace.